Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I hope your day is going better than mine. Um, it's been a little bit challenging, but um, I like to share some of my antidotes because that could help someone that's also going through it. So don't me if I'm periodically checking this camera because I'm already stuck, right? It's going to be that type of day, guys. This is acting really glitchy. I'm like, let me move it in and out. Is it catching me better now? It's a it's a free screen recorder. I don't want to have to pay for some. I know there's some better than others. Usually this camera is pretty good. So if there's a little lag time, so be it. At least you know I'm still here. I'm a live person. Even if, uh, see my hand waving. But the lag time's ridiculous. I shouldn't even be, um, you know, there is like a three second lag time. I apologize. I know it's not easy on the eyes. So I had quite the teachable day. Everything's a teachable day. That's why I like doing little um, vids as it's still fresh in my mind. Of course, I'm barely sleeping these days because I'm up extremely late now. Up first thing because a lot of us have been on viewing YouTube for so long, right? For many years. Um, I've been a um, content creator for not too long now. It is like, I think I'm, I'm going to hit the year mark in like June. Something like that. So, um, not incredibly long like a lot of people. But I can definitely, I'm very prolific. You'll see I do have a lot of vids. Because as I'm going through it, I'm presently applying a lot of the knowledge that I learned in most people, you know, you'll get to that stage, but um, others will appreciate you sharing the little things because I wish I knew some things prior and also I appreciate the people who did share to keep me at least as ready as I was for any type of um, dealings with the legalities. No matter where you go, it seems like it's still the same bullshit, right? Um, we deal with uh, exposing a lot of what's going on on my channel. I might put this on BitChute because BitChute, I was ranting and raving. It's okay, BitChute. I'll give you another chance. I usually don't go too deep because BitChute, they want quick vids, quick answers, quick, 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 quick. Not everything can be quick. The best things in life take time and you do have to meditate on the truth. And if you don't got that kind of time, you see the timestamp on the vid, you already know what it is, you know. And you can't just skim through all the parts because it doesn't flow the same and you're missing some key elements. So um, I'll share, I'll get to it. Um, so I had a dermatologist appointment. I'll keep it as general as possible so it can apply to anybody else if this happens to you. I like exposing, um, you know, the corporate bullshit legal system versus the real judicial or, you know, what's left of it, um, continental United States, the Republic system, right? The Republic government, right? So there, but it's still, there's a dichotomy because that corporation, when every time someone says the state, the this, the that, it's like an all powerful. They're just one of many, right? What is that, King Louis? So I don't even like using, you know, the word state because it has so many connotations going back to, you know, the states of the papal jurisdiction. So we're all about jurisdiction. A lot of people probably see some of my vids. I don't know how prolific in this stuff people are on BitChute because, um, you know, I got a lot of flack because people are like, oh, if it wasn't for BitChute, I wouldn't have woke up. Well, that's great, but a lot of us started on YouTube and you know it. Just because YouTube likes to censor certain things, a lot of us have learned to sidestep it. You know, you can stretch your topics out. You don't have to be so bold in every video, right? So I do tone it down in different parts. Like, you got to use tact. And I do that even with dealing with corporate agents if they want to admit it or not. You almost like allow them to violate you. Like you play the little, you know, poor thing role. And then when they violate you, you get them where it hurts. Because I had an interaction today that was totally unrelated. We're already doing so much, right? This um, information's really getting out there. 
how people are um, filing different forms to get remedies that are helping them, right? Because a lot of people are suffering. And a lot of amazing teachers are saying that they accept 1099s. And I would be all about that if you need something from me. Um, because, you know, you know, hook up with, that's how business people should be, right? If, um, because that's a just exchange, right? And, um, you can use, um, 1099s to receive payment, right? And all you got to do is act as trustee and file the rest of the form. So when I heard someone say that, I thought that was so cool. And I would so do the same too. You know, um, to show good faith. You know what I mean? And I, it's, it's a learning experience because we should do our own businesses, guys. If you really study the system, take the time to do the boring stuff. Yeah, you're not going to be able to go out like you used to. Who cares? What is there to go out and see? It's all abominations everywhere you look. Everyone's just acting. They're just so rude to each other. Everyone's out for themselves. They all do the same thing. The place is polluted. I don't know how they can party where they party. I had um, family who did a gathering at the same waterfront that I put up a vid where a dead body floated up like last week. And you think they even cared or heard of it? I'm like, that would be like the last place I'd want to go have a party at. Um, at the restaurant near that place. But um, just people are just too self-absorbed nowadays. But um, So I went to this dermatologist appointment and um, I was treated really poorly i didn't realize they were pushing this you know the whole mass thing still pushing that right um and the lady i didn't realize that you um nurse practitioners i didn't know you were law counsel can you please show me you know your years of study um i'd like to see um some more you know cite me some laws because we can't go into the war crimes that are in the u.s codes that they have to abide by, right? Because anywhere you go, a lot of people, it's like a basic fundamental, but um, just this fundamental is so applicable into every situation. You don't think when you go even to a doctor's office, that was a financial situation. Yeah, they made you sign all the financials first before they even saw your ass, right? They wouldn't even take you. It doesn't matter if you were coughing up blood, I'm sure, right? Oh, let me get your card. Let me get your social. Uh, uh, all like thirsty, right? But before even that, they were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You need to do this. You need to do that. I'm like, excuse me. Like, where's the contract, right? And I was like, oh, that gives me like, I've already had issues with that. And everyone was so far apart. And she's like, well, the state, like, I won't see you then unless you do that. Like, it was so crazy, right? I don't want to give too many details, but I did file a grievance. And um, just letting you know that can be done. That's something you'd want to do in your process. Because when they ask for your social, which is embedded in your um, medical ID, these are all sub-accounts. So, you know, a lot of people have already talked about the, um, the trust, the initial social security trust, attach the birth certificate. If you don't know, then this video is not for you. You have to go back and look at videos like meet your straw man. Like go back to basics and you'll get it. And so, um, yeah, so there's like levels to this thing and you have to know that you are, um, when they have the social security number they created a fiduciary type of relationship which means they have a duty to accommodate you you're the beneficiary of that not the other way around but the way i was treated i don't if you guys think this is ranting that's on you because i have to share a little bit of my story to show people this is what's going on because in the steps that I took and what can be done. Oh, of course, this person's going to get a notice for like damages or whatever, you know, because they don't even realize what the state is and that it's a corporate state. Let me look up war crimes for you. War crimes. Um, Title 18 is a good one because they break a lot of those too. Of course, we know about Title 15, which is all the credit repair. You're going to see a lot of videos on that. Um, 
China. So we use different law reference, which still stands. No matter where you go, we're under the UCC, negotiable instruments. Everything is commerce. Even going to the doctors, it's not an all-powerful thing unless you made it that way. People make it an all-powerful thing like this beast. This Leviathan, based on this book, Leviathan by Thomas Hobbes. You know? And it becomes like this machine that engulfs everyone. And But who makes up the machine, right? These are like all little people. Read the people. It's crazy. So, um, Title U.S. Code, subsection 2441, War Crimes. Let's look. And you go into the definition, prohibit, because a lot of what they do is torture, mental pain and suffering. So I go in there, and she's pushing that junk on me, right? And I was like, oh, you know, I was like, I felt like under duress. I did it under duress, even though I was already hyperventilating. And I already, like, there's chemicals in that, you know, the paper one. So I go sit down, and I, like, put my head over, and I put it down just to, like, write whatever. And I was already feeling like this is going to go too easy. Either I'm going to, like, scream and run out of here, or um, I'm just going to let her violate me, which I know she is. I could just already tell by her misconduct and that she could just be civilly liable because she's going to know and be reported. So I called the insurance company. If you get any type of misconduct from a service provider, it may even be from a health service provider because that is still a financial transaction. And I was like, oh, hell no, right? Like, oh, they're going to charge my account whatever the amount for being treated like shit. And she already had a bias because I didn't want to deal with that and she wouldn't accommodate. So she was already really shitty. She didn't give me a, um, a thorough exam at all. Didn't give me a diagnosis but was trying to prescribe me antihistamine when you look that up so many side effects that's pre I'm like yeah because you want a little something for your drugs because they're all in collusion with the drug cartel do I have to say it because I wanted some holistic treatment for my skin I have a bit of eczema whatever a lot of us do right especially people with albinism on the lighter complexion it can affect anybody. It really can. But I hear UV light therapy is very holistic. And you can get a prescription for that. And I know people who do that, right? So I don't know what she was thinking. Like, oh, you don't want to prescribe um, something less invasive that would be in the best interest of the beneficiary. But... Um, you know, on the basis that, oh, you don't have a diagnosis, but she wanted to prescribe me a drug. What does that tell you? Isn't that complete trash? Yeah, because they are trash. So um, we look up war crimes and torture, because we're being violated every day. Harm is, you know, we're aggrieved. We're so vexed. We're so this and that. And it's tiring. So a lot of us are pushing back because you need to go down swinging, right? You know, don't even go down, right? You got to stand up for your convictions and what you know is right. And that's why it's so important to learn the law because a lot of people are getting a lot of success. I mean, you just got to say a couple of applicable laws to your situation. That helps with your postage. That can help with anything so it helps you know doing these vids and going through the motions really helps me retain the information as well so in part a here it says the act of a person who commits or conspires or attempts to commit an act specifically intended to inflict severe physical or mental pain or suffering other than pain or suffering incidental to lawful sanctions upon another person within his custody or physical control for the purpose of obtaining information or a confession punishment intimidation i felt very intimidated like if you don't do what i say i won't even see you well how about if the person's skin is like burning and they needed that relief and now they got to go pay out of pocket which is totally fine because if I have to deal with just the insurance people alone, 
right, and get a holistic prescription, that's fine, right? Uh, you can do certain things because if these people don't want to, then don't give them your business at all. And I call them to make sure that um, they're not going to charge more than the standard rate. And the claim hasn't been processed yet, but you can inquire. They said I can call back and do that, so that's good to know. That you can check to see how much they charged your insurance to make sure there's no funny business, right? Because they might inflate some of the things they did, even though they did nothing to you. And I basically left there worse than when I came. I was stressed out, unseen, and, um, you know, pretty much... Um, bullied right to still to she's like oh the mandate's been in place for two years i'm like what a freaking nazi i'm gonna keep it team i'm trying guys i'm like wow wow you must be the a-hole of the week she wins for the a-hole of the week i won't even put her name on blast shoo um because um i'm gonna what you do you don't get mad you get even right you just put your head down and you start sending out um their um their notices, right? Like you've been served kind of thing. So cruel or inhumane treatment. Yeah, they treat us like we're not even human. Like who, if it wasn't for us, they wouldn't even have those buildings. Do you see how expensive some of those buildings are? Those medical buildings, those dermatology. Those, the, I'm like, I probably paid, our accounts probably paid for all this furniture. Like the hell with these people, these sorcerers and these witches, you know? Because, um... You're either you're wicked or you're not. And I'm not saying this in everybody in that profession. Of course not. You know, I got referred to another one. If I deal with the same, you know, I better not deal with the same experience or I'll just handle it, you know, the way I need to handle it. Because you notice they don't want to pay for holistic practitioners or things like that. So, um, performing biological experiments. The act of a person who subjects or, yeah, because it is when they're trying to give you um, different strange substances, right? Without a legitimate, you know, I mean, they'll try to give you, see, that's the thing we get, we get screwed up with. We get screwed up with that right there. We think, oh, because the doctor said, or the nurse said, it must be legitimate. No, 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 nope. because, um, it's, most of it is not legitimate, you know, it's not. It does more harm than good, and it actually endangers their protocols. Mm -hmm. You can't say too much on here. You already know. You know? So it goes into maiming or anybody, you know, who... So you have a lot of this um, causing sickness, you know, just stressing you out to the point um, just because, oh, the state, the state. It's like, whatever. Go learn some damn law. And you have to be like an employee. There has to be something in place. Like, first of all, that's why it gets really crazy with the whole U.S. citizen. And people think, oh, um, you're renouncing this and that. A U.S. citizen is just a federal person. It's like a corporation that's in the District of Columbia. You need, if you don't know the differences of jurisdictions and things like that, then, um, yeah, that's something you got to study. But, you know, a mandate is, they say in practice, a judicial command or precept proceeding from a court or a judicial officer directing the proper officer to enforce a judgment, sentence, or decree. Seaman versus Clark. And in the practice of the Supreme Court of the United States, the mandate is a precept or order issued upon the decision of an appeal or writ of error directing the action to be taken or disposition to be made of the case by the inferior court in some of the state jurisdictions the name mandate has been substituted for mandamus mandamus huh as the formal title of that writ in contracts, a bailment of property, I found this interesting, in regard to which the bailee engages to do some act without reward. Is that our all cat person? And they keep 
talking about these mandates. That's an artificial corporation. I got nothing to do with me. I'm the beneficiary. I'm the executor, the CEO thereof. Now what? Uh, you see how it's two different things? But um, most people just knowing that, that's why I try to give some references that you can look up and at least some words. So, um, and that there is from Story Bailing 137. <clears throat> Look, a mandate is a contract. And that's what I said in my um, grievance, right? I was so grieved. It's funny how they use that term, right? It's so biblical. How many times does that word even pop up in the Bible? Um, I was so grieved. So, um, yeah, I was saying, I don't have a duty to perform. When I walked in your, you know, in that business, because the lady asked me to recite what happened, and I said how when I walked in there, um, before I can even do anything, I was like harassed severely over that when I'm over here as a consumer, you know, I'm in my private capacity, um, as the beneficiary of that number of the trust, which is being used, utilized on the back end in the, in the books, right? So, um, I, my mind just started going a million miles an hour. I'm like, I can't with this witch. So I didn't get any treatment. I got treated like crap and she's probably going to charge my account so much and already like telling me what to do, telling me like you didn't give, you know, I wasn't given a proper exam. So why are you going to deny me diagnosis? It, so there was so much like biased and bad energy and they just seemed so phony like they really didn't care and they were very, you know. And um, if you are a nurse or if you are in that field, p uh, pin your hair up because I see these women in there with their hair flowing all over the place. That's one thing if you're going somewhere or your home or whatever. You know how much a woman sheds? That hair goes everywhere and their hair is all over i'm like that's so unhygienic pin your damn hair up i want to see you you know damn near with the hair net on you know what i mean be a little bit more hygienic they go in there and they just you can tell they don't know the law they don't know anything they just care about their eyelashes and their hair and their this because they're all dolled up just to go to work you're like get a fucking life excuse my language get an f in life right they don't know their ass from their elbow so they were a piece of shit um, and it tells you a <clears throat> mandate is a contract by which, by which a lawful business is committed to the management of another and by him undertaken to be performed gratuitously. Yeah, that's what they want from us. And I have um, the Black's Law, if you don't have it. It's something you would like to have as just a reference. It's a big old, it's a big boy. It's a big boy. But, yeah, you get a lot. You get the term uh, mandato. So it comes from the Spanish law. Interesting. Contract of mandate. So where was the contract? So they treat you like you're an employee, which is a U.S. citizen. Right? Where's my um, EI at? Because she's like, the state, this, this. I'm like, I don't give a shit what the state says. Because, um... If you look up these states, guys, so cooperation, you know, look up the state of whatever you live in. They all have EIN numbers. They're just doing business. And these numbers, yeah, you can do commercial liens. A lot of people already um, go into that. That is your right. When someone violates you, like that is the classy way of fighting instead of, you know, getting like that you're like oh yeah you hit people where it hurts the most their pockets because all people care about it's not about each other anymore right so you can go on this website i don't know if you ever been on it hipaa space is great to look up different ones but this is the one from massachusetts and it'll give you a whole general profile this is hipaa h-i-p-a-a S P A C E dot com and I'll give you a profile. Not to say this is an exhaustive directory because you need to use others too. Sometimes you gotta Google it because they, they like to hide this stuff. So you know it's um so this is a number I wrote down just for my own due diligence. 
I don't need all these windows open. And I have this little, this is great. I think my ink just got delivered. I think it's outside. So um, I'll try not to make this too long here. But um, just know that um, we're dealing with the Buck Act. This is a great reference. The U.S. citizens, citizens with the lower C, how they're always trying to get us to say that's what we are when that's not a proper noun. So it's describing an entity, not so much a living being. Therefore, the U.S. citizens, citizens of the District of Columbia, residing in one of the states of the Union are classified as property and franchises, get it, of the federal government as an individual entity. So that's from Wheeling Steel Corporation versus Fox. I actually cited that law, that case law, in my W-8 Ben. So like I was saying, if people like work for each other and they accept 1099s, then you want to file that with the W-8 Ben. That way you can be um, tax exempt because we're technically foreign to the United States Corporation and because we're on the land and they're dealing with admiralty jurisdiction. That's why you see them with the yellow fringe, you know. The tells are everywhere. And, like, you know, if you break it down to people and they can't get it, um, it's just, it's fine. You know what I mean? It's it's a learning curve. You know, um, some people that I thought would never get it are starting to get it. So, you know, it's up to the Most High what he will do, right? Under the Buck Act, um, 4 U.S. Code, Section, or U.S.C.S., Sections 105, 110, is just um, like a breakdown but you can actually well, I guess I can't where is that 10510 for you for you yes yeah, for I don't think he meant to put a um, s that's what I thought state and so forth taxation oops so it's this one see i gotta write down all this stuff so that is that subsection 105 so it's for u.s code so that's the correction on here where is it at yeah he he didn't mean to put that uh 105 to 10 so this is another reference to help support what it means to if you See, this is a thing, you know, this is stuff that people got to, um, you know, sometimes you have to print it out or take screenshots. If you don't have, um, you know, ink and paper, you don't have to tell me twice how expensive that can be. What I do in the meantime sometimes to save money is just to take screenshots and make different folders in my, and save it to my flash drive. So this would be for U.S. Code, subsection 105 state and so forth taxation affecting see federal areas you know we're outside of the federal areas but you try to tell people that it's really hard for them to get the concepts you're not one of the um, citizens of the states of the union kind of thing right let's see goes into a little bit of the history the Buck Act and the United States of America. A map of the United States of America. It includes the 50 sovereign and independent states who are freely associated together in a union. It does not include the District of Columbia, which was created by the Constitution of the Union as the legal home of the federal government. That government was intended to be a servant to the Union States, not their master. In order for the federal government to tax a citizen of one of the several states, they had to create a contractual nexus. This contractual nexus is called Social Security. The federal government always does everything according to principles of laws. In 1935, the federal government instituted Social Security. The Social Security Board then created 
10 social security districts creating a federal area which covered the several states like an overlay. In 1939, the federal government instituted the Public Salary Tax Act of 1939, which is a municipal law of the District of Columbia. Taxing, so this is a new thing, so this is what happened between 1938 and 39. This mysterious year comes up in that UCC connection book too. Taxing all federal and state government employees and those who live and work in any federal area. Now the government knows it cannot tax those citizens who live and work outside the territorial jurisdiction of Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, or Article 4, Section 3, Clause 2. So in 1940, Congress passed the Buck Act for USC, as we read, right? 104. In Section 110E, this act allowed any department of the federal government to create a federal area. Yeah, so when you go in these institutions, they're trying to put you in some type of federal area that stretches all the way from D.C. talking about mandates when it has to do with the corporation. They got nothing to do with you. But, like, we need to not even comply or do anything because that is acquiescence. I will never, ever, ever again, you know, acquiesce to anything. I did it under duress and that was still too much. I should have just been like, the hell with you, you're lost, never coming here again, telling everybody you're trash. That's what, that's what you need to be like. You got to be bold because you are the value. They need you. You're the piggy bank, so to speak, right? It's disgusting how they're treating people. So, right here, it created this federal area for imposition of the Public Salary Tax Act of 1939. The imposition of this tax is at 4 U.S.C. Section 111, and the rest of the taxing law is in Title 26, the Internal Revenue Code. The Social Security Board had already created an overlay of a federal area. As a result, the federal government created federal states, which are exactly like the sovereign states and occupies the same territory and boundaries, but whose names are capitalized versions mm, of the sovereign states. Remember that proper names and proper nouns in the English language have only the first letter capitalized. For example, the federal state of Illinois is overlaid upon the sovereign state of Illinois. Wow. Further, it is designated by the federal designation of IL instead of the sovereign state abbreviation of ILL. So too is Arizona designated AZ instead of the lawful abbreviation of ARIZ or AR. I Z C A instead of C A L I F for California, etc. If you use a two letter capitalized abbreviation, you are declaring that the location is under the jurisdiction of the federal government instead of the powers of the sovereign state. As a result of creating these shadow states, the federal government assumes that every area is a federal area and that the citizens therein are federal citizens. For USC Section 110D, the term state includes any territory or possession of the United States. For USC Section 110E, the term federal area means any lands or premises held or acquired by or for the use of the United States or any department, establishment, or agency of the United States, any federal area or any part thereof, which is located within the exterior boundaries of any state, shall be deemed to be a federal area located within such state. There is no reasonable doubt that the federal state is imposing direct directly 
in excise tax under the provisions of 4 U.S. USC Section 105, which states in pertinent part, Section 105, state and so forth, taxation affecting federal areas, sales and use tax. So it goes into it. And I'll break it down for you guys too, right here. Thus, the question comes up, what is a federal area? A federal area is any area designated by an agency, department, or establishment of the federal government. This includes the Social Security areas designated by the Social Security Administration. Any public housing area that has federal funding, a home that has a federal bank loan, oh, a road that has federal funding, and almost everything that the federal government touches through any type of aid. This federal area attaches to anyone who has a social security number or any personal contact with the federal or state governments. Thus, the federal government has usurped sovereignty of the people and state sovereignty by creating these federal areas within the boundaries of the states under the authority of the federal constitution. Article 4, Section 3, Clause 2, which states, The Congress shall have power to depose or dispose of and make all needful rules and regulations respecting the territory or other property belonging to the United States. And nothing in this Constitution shall be construed as to prejudice any claims of the United States or any particular state. And I was just bringing that up to show they try to put you in this federal jurisdiction. So you got to be like, no, I got nothing to do with that. You know, so this has to do with the Buck Act. There's some laws for you. So I was like, oh, how much does it cost to go to, uh, you know, just to know. So I know pretty much how much. It's good to look up, like, what your procedure would cost or not. Just to visit, because if they didn't even, like, help you and diagnose you, just gave you a damn attitude. You know how some people are like, oh, they act like you're making it up, or they act like it's in your head. Like, they do that to a lot of people with autoimmune issues. Like, you're not going to gaslight the patients, you freaking idiot, and think you're going to get paid. So how much does a dermatologist visit cost without insurance? On average, a dermatologist visit will cost about $221, but will range depending on various factors. Without insurance, the cost of visiting the dermatologist can be very daunting, especially if you need prescriptions to maintain healthy skin. Mira provides up to blah blah. Yeah, you don't want any of that shit. So, any initial visit to the dermatologist will be separate, will be a separate cost from any treatments procedures you have done. On average, a dermatologist visit will cost about $221. Yeah, just to see you for two minutes and talk out of their ass. You see what? That, that's, a quick, that's a quick racket right there. However, the cost will likely depend, of course, on the location. Oh, and it's all about the prescription medications. And any additional, you know, if you can get in there, you know, it's crazy how they are. I think when they know they can't play you, they don't, they right away, like, get really, really defensive. You know, sometimes it's spiritual. Sometimes your spirit and their spirit already fought between, before you even walked in the room. They already know they don't like you for some reason. You, you ever get that with people? And you don't like them for some reason, right? So, um, procedure costs, prescriptions, yeah. Ziana, oh look, Ziana, meth, they want to give you some meth for your outbreak, like that's not going to cause, oh, for acne, sure, sure, because you know, these things are really safe for you, I just looked up one, anybody who reads the Bible can already tell whose name do you already see, any of the Bible buffs, 
Azazel. I already see Azazel's name in there. Telling you that they're getting their knowledge from, right? From the tree of knowledge. Dark knowledge. But you go into it and it's like, has all these crazy side effects. Like, oh, it's so, but it can cause, you know, um, it make you like want to sleep for unusually long periods of time. All that for like skin stuff, headache. How about when you already said you already had a headache and stuff like that, you know? And if they don't even tell you about the con um, contra indications, but you know, this is just an antihistamine, right? And things like that, right? Like this person just wanted to give me something like a quick fix or some steroids or some bullshit. And look, isn't this what they were telling people what would happen if you got the so-called Rona? Anosoma or Anosmia. It's called smell blindness, did you know? Hmm. The ability to lose smell, well that can mess you up if there's a fire or chemicals or gas leaking in your house, right? That could be a problem. So, you go in there for a little, you know, eczema, and then they try to give you some shit that's not going to do nothing because they didn't even do a proper exam, you know what I'm trying to say? That shit be leaving you grieved. That shit be leaving you grieved. Most high is grieved, too. Look how many times it comes up, you know? It says, if we assay to commune with thee, Without be grieved, but who can withhold himself from speaking? I beheld in Psalms, I beheld the transgressor, um, transgressors, and was grieved because they kept not thy word. Daniel was grieved in his spirit, in the middle of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you see. We're all pretty grieved here, you know, because, and obviously it's a very important word because you don't think that the system, you know, the artificial matrix or whatever, doesn't copy from what, what was already there, right? Because you file grievances with said entities, right? I was calling, um, you know the insurance company doing a grievance today and I'm like oh I know that this words in the Bible right I know and you'll see it many many times Hebrews 3 chapter 3 verse 10 wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said they do always err in their heart and they have not known my ways yeah holistic ways herbs using UV light the Sun you shouldn't have to freaking pay for a uh, death sentence. The archers have sorely grieved him. Yeah, because they just want to give people chemicals. It's almost like a euthanasia. Job chapter 30 verse 25. Did not I weep for him that was in trouble? Was not my soul grieved for the poor? You know, there's so many guys. You just look up the times you can see it in the Bible. Because I just found it funny that you would file a grievance. And that's something that you would want to do. Um, because I'm I'm pissed. Look at the nerve. And if you don't know about Azazel. Azazel. Did I just shut that? I didn't mean to. You just put... Because the word, even though it's A-Z-E-L, just put A-L, or a Z, right here, Azazel, but Azel, doesn't matter, Azel, they just, they play with these words too much, right? And, um, some information, and it's funny, because you, if you go on, um, images, it's like all the stuff you see in these comics and things like that, right? Got the horns. There's a lot of depictions of the sky, right? It's probably the same entity, maybe. But um, yeah, because you'll see a lot of these um drugs, and it's no wonder, like some of their names. I mean, you can say I overthink. I like people. I love people on BitChute, guys. 
you overthink, you do this and that. I'm like, yeah, that's what I do. That's why I'm on this forum, right? Because in the real world, people are not thinking enough. This is a great website too, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. So where's my notes? So I talked to this wonderful, wonderful woman. You know, when you're dealing with a-holes, the most high is going to send equally righteous people to help you out. This helps with like removing um, inaccurate information from your credit report. A lot of people are sending letters, using laws like that too. But this will probably come up in your research if that's something that you're interested in. So it's just good to have it now. Um, because it's something that I just came across the past few days and I'm like, oh good, that's another really good reference because you can do grievances on here for different institutions, right, that harmed you or misused your information or whatever. The case may be reporting false information on your credit report, which is derogatory and that's causing you harm. So um, I called... So, so annoyed, right? So after this whole interaction, I call the insurance company. I, make sure you get the person's name, whoever you're dealing with, because, you know, um, notices might have to come up later, and it's really good. Yeah, you can, you know, deal with the person in their, um, you know, natural capacity, and also the principal they work for. I mean, I don't care who you work for. You can't just blindly treat people however, and then just say you're doing your job. No, you're not doing your job. Especially when you're in these health fields, right? You're going to notice most of these chicks are not very helpful, very empathetic, and they're just there for the wrong reasons. We've seen that with a lot of people. But Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, you can just type in CFPB, okay? That's really great, but just um, realize what um war crimes look like because this happens to us all the time we get in pain and suffering i hear i heard people getting takedown like they hurt somebody over that i mean talk about control freaks talk about freaking control freaks right and um you hear all kind of stories because i've noticed a lot of people go and i'm not saying it's everybody don't come at me but yeah they do pay a lot you know what I mean? <laughs> Look at that lady's face. You want her taking care of you and your olds? I'd rather do it myself. I already have it all planned out. I, I can't even trust. <laughs> I think If you think I'm going to end up in a nursing home, you're out of your freaking mind. That's not going to happen. And you know they suck your, um, your estate dry while you're in there. Treat you like a damn invalid, right? We already know... A big pharma is really, really all about. Um, don't even have enough time, guys. We're already going into an hour, right? But Amada's were right here. Let me get my face out so you can see. Ah, that's that's what I, that's what these chicks look like. <laughs> this is the American Medical Association, and they're like, I have a license to do this. I hear having a license is to do something. Um, to be able to get away with doing something illegal or unlawful. Isn't that strange? That is very strange. So, yeah, um, if you have any issues with any type of medical personnel, right, and they are treating you like straight trash, you want to call the insurance company right away, get all um, the information you can from these people, this is not where I had my thumbnails. Hold on, guys. Oh, man. But the medical system is controlled by the Dracos through the vehicle of the American Medical Association, which uses Gestapo-like methods to quelch or squelch any efforts at using... Okay? You can't even read too much of this. But um, I'll just leave it up a little bit. Um, while I go into my story. So I called this woman. Uh, I called um, a representative at my insurance on the phone. I had the lady's name and she looked her up for me. So that was great. 
She took my grievance over the phone. I guess you can also do it online. I am going to follow up, but I wanted it known. That way it can support whatever further paperwork you're going to send their way. Say, hey, there's already a record. And they're so cool, you can request them to mail you a copy. And they'll give you a reference number so you can reference it. I have my, it's called um, an appeal number or a grievance number. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's just the filing number and um, they'll give you like identifiers with it and the woman was so 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 sweet okay shout out to Melly I know she <laughs> if she ever comes across this video her name was Melly she was so nice she and she took the time she had to put me on hold for a bunch to go f um, fix it and she told me you know the claim didn't come in yet but I could call um, say in a few days or in a week or whatever and um, inquire about it so I found that to be extremely um, helpful just to you know because now I know it's 200 you always want to look up like how much does the procedure cost like have a little bit of understanding regardless of the provider I mean this is just one of many things that you're gonna go through because every day it's like a new thing as I'm doing my other things of course this uh, you know Madida comes up and then I'm like of course just to stress me out I didn't sleep good as it was but that's fine um, she'll be sorry and there'll be a, a public record if anybody looks up these people that they were grievances filed and that can be in addition because they don't want to give you a proper checkup right but then they're so quick to write you scripts for dangerous stuff like all these different things she was like what so you don't want to prescribe a more humane thing that i know that can be done that i know people who um are having it done that's fine i'll pay out of pocket myself but just the treatment too and remember this line, this is so, so true, I tell people all the time, a closed mouth, don't get fed. If you don't speak up, if you don't enforce your rights one way or another, may it be with the credit um, sharks, right? May it be with um, these um, jerks at all these different places trying to tell you what to do and you didn't have a contract. Like, when did you start treating people like property, like their feelings don't matter? That's what they've done. So like with all these, you know, the Buck Act and all of that stuff, that's why I like to go into a little law because a lot of people don't know that even though this, by the time I even upload this vid, it's already in the past. Like by the time you got to see it, I'm already doing something else and this is in the past. So by the time I saw it, this is, this information like is already in the past. Like I'm speaking to you from the past because you're going to see this in the future in the next couple of hours when it's uploaded. Do you know what I mean? So that means I would have been done and it's over, right? It's behind us, right? It's behind me. So I had to learn from so many other people and yet, you know, so how long has this, it's just only a remnant's going to know. And they say, you know, a very small percentage of the population. And I guess in a way that's good because this population has been so demoralized, you know, been so demoralized because every, and the reason I even had that Leviathan picture, where'd he go, Leviathan? Well, he's gone, that's fine. I wanted this picture up. Those who manipulate the organized habits and opinions of the masses constitute an invisible government which is the true ruling power of our country. And that's from Edward Bernays, Austrian pioneer in the field of public relations and propaganda, Austrian-American, they call him, referred to in his obituary as the father of public relations. Yeah, he was like in charge of propaganda, huh? So he would know, guys, and this came up. I'm going to wrap up with you guys. I got to go get my, my ink. Now it's finally in. Finally. I can finally. I want to print out that book act. I'm going to put this for you guys too. This is something that's so cool. I think I already downloaded it. Did I? I'll download it again. Make sure. I'll download it in two different places. I don't care. That's how good it is. You know what I'm trying to say? Shoot, I'll put it in the music thing. I got I got laws in every folder. 
but I like to print it out too because you're going to use it in some of your documents and you're going to see that these laws are going to apply to other facets of what you're going through because we're all going through this malarkey together and this came up because I was hearing a conversation and this woman was complaining you know how these young people are they just do whatever they want they don't know how to have like self um, restraint they don't want to listen you know same old great right every generation kind of thing and the guy was like oh society it's society's fault like okay well I can't uh, lean society uh, I need to uh, I can't go um, confront all of society those are millions and millions of people like what do you do you can't just blame every but who controls society or who molded that is the question too who molds society who molds the culture right the people at the top that have you think in a certain way right so you could just keep feeding the system but they're literally feeding off us right unbeknownst to the person um, that's why the matrix was trying to say what it said in so many words that you know the monetary system you know how we're being used as a battery we back the dollar there's no mistake why when you look at a dollar bill you look at the serial numbers and there's a letter just like on the back of your social security card right thank you but he's like oh it's society's fault society's fault no every person should be held liable for their actions and yeah it is the corporate policy that people are pushing on others that is true right but it's just a corporation like i showed you right it's just a corporation we already showed i showed you all the different laws that's great and um just having this um consumer financial protection bureau that to me is great. I have that written down because it is a financial transaction. You didn't just go in there pro bono. They didn't do it for charity, right? But go in there and try that, right? That you will get a bill if they'll even see you, right? But it's funny how they want to sit there and screen you and get all your financials. I mean, you could be like having an attack. You could be feeling really, really ill at the time and need immediate attention, but they got to register your ass, right? It was in such poor taste then to push that too early in the morning for that she got the wrong one guys she got the wrong one right because she don't know that I share my two cents with some of my you know fellow um freedom defenders right so um you know, I'm keeping um, discretion, not saying where exactly it happened. I hear Hertz, too, the rental company. Stay away from that. Hertz is, like, all over the news. They're, like, falsely reporting people stealing their cars. They had cops impersonate as repo guys. <laughs> I'll be surprised. This world's, like, upside down, right? It's upside down. And uh, all we can do is worry about the little things every day to empower ourselves. You can't make yourself crazy. But that's another fraud. You see, the fraud don't stop. And these people um, were innocent, right? So, you know, just remember, closed mouths don't get fed. You know, if somebody hits you or somebody robs from you, somebody harms you, and you don't speak up, it's almost like you agreed with it, right? And when they say, do this, do that, I don't, where's the contract that said I had to? Do I work for you? I, I'm here as a private patron. Um, I don't have a duty to perform, but you had a duty to perform with me, especially since you had my credentials, which um, right there formed a trust relationship. If you know trust law or not, it doesn't matter. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. You know, And this is not for everybody in the system. There, are, I'm sure, um, high-quality people, but at the same time, you know, you're controlled at the top. You're limited. If you want to be a real healer, you have to go into the private sector. You can accept 1099s and do all that. I would be happy to if somebody wanted my holistic services or my time. I'd be happy to accept all of that. And I would make sure I would treat you with the utmost respect and honor and make sure that um, everything's done um, holistically and not invasively. And you can know, rest assured, I'm not sold out by any drug cartel. 
So we're going to start doing our own scripts, our own everything, and just buy our own equipment with these 1099s or whatever we got to do, right? <laughs> and uh, do our own holistic stuff. Uh, that definitely was a learning experience, you know. Um, I knew that there was a chance I was going to be wasting my time, but it's never a waste of time if you're learning something. And if you take even an ugly situation, and I was like, oh, hell no. I was like, with that attitude, like... Like, I felt violated. You know, you feel it. Right? So I made sure I called right away. Make sure you get the first, last name, everything you can. Act like, play it off. Like, oh, I just wanted to ask my insurance company. So don't, don't say you're going to file. Not, don't say nothing like that, right? Because then they're going to clam up. They're going to be like, oh, 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 I can't give that information. Oh. He was saying that about... um the price i'm like oh how much he's like oh um the claim hasn't been processed yet but i can't uh give that information i was like whatever dude and i know a lot of people are having issues um i know this is really random but i if you haven't seen this lady's video just wanted to show you i have like my little papers here if you have rolls of paper like wrapping paper and stuff like that like, I'm actually going to make some, guys. There are videos. I mean, I know, right? People are like, how do you know this stuff? Um, sometimes it's because of a need. I have no more envelopes left. <laughs> I'm ready to make my own, guys. I have all kind of rolls of paper. I got black. Like, any type of these for packaging. And what's cool, guys, is that she'll show you how to make and she's really good. You just make like a rectangle, a square. You like you measure out the, um, the letter you're doing or the card and you just add an inch to it or 2.5 centimeters, which she put me on to, I guess 2.5 centimeters is an inch. That's pretty cool. Um, for the slack space and um, you would cut um like a square here and she'll show you how to fold it crease it so cute the channel is called style harmony the best way to make envelopes in any size without an envelope maker make sure it's that video because there's a lot of videos up but she was quite the great um teacher and i really appreciated your tutorial ma'am because that really <laughs> That stuff was awesome. That stuff was so awesome. Hold on, that's another thing I wanted to show too before I let you go. Because, um, you know, we're trying to limit our expenses, especially when you're doing your own legal process and you're going after these creeps and you're, um, you know, we're dealing with private common law. But um, I had this as an example and um, some things that will help with your mailing to make sure. Um, I know it doesn't have certified mail on this. I'll keep my stuff. Whatever. But you see how I just got, like, they just put a little. See right here. I got this sent back to me. Sometimes if you're really new. Can you see? See how there's just a little barcode? I'm trying to put it up. Come on. See how they just put this? this white thing as a sticker to say that they got it and I only put a three cent stamp can you see a three cent stamp and it came back to me it did go through that's all that was on there this literally went through but they don't they don't stamp it the same way I found that funny and um, to help with your, um, to, to show that you're outside of the jurisdiction, when you do the address, it's good to put CO or in care of. Sometimes I forget the without. Before the city, you put W slash O. I used to do that all the time, like clockwork. Sometimes you forget, you know what I mean? So that's why I like doing this. I remind myself because I'm reading through stuff as I'm reading it to you. So we're like learning together. And then you put your um, city, state, the actual sovereign state. And then you like to put a provision outside 
you can put um, without the United States or outside and I put outside US postal zone and I put my um, the zip code the federal zip code in brackets and it got to me guys it got to me you just got a little sticker though that's all you get you don't get like this whole thing but to show you we're doing incredible things to make this process as affordable you know, you just got to be a do-it-yourself type of person. That's what YouTube's all about. And a lot of people don't want to do things themselves, but that's fine too. But we're learning this process and this just encourage YouTubers too that if you um, want any type of compensation for your work, start accepting 1099As. All you got to do is process the 1096, the 1099 OID as the trustee, right? As the trustee because you're of age, and um, a 1040 voucher. You know, go and um, check out Chris H. There are other people that um, go into it too. But, um, you know, if you want to do that for each other, that's great. Like any legwork, you know. If I have like a template I can help you with, of course I do a lot of things for nothing. I mean, I help people out all the time. I show you guys a lot of what I'm doing too. But for like real legwork, that way it can like motivate motivate people to link up and to do more, um, you know, I'll provide more goods and services for each other. I mean, that's really the American way, you know. We just got to be creative and stop feeding these nasty corporations, even these medical places. Ugh, I'm so mad at myself for even wasting my time going there. I knew better. I knew better. So I hope this wasn't long. I'm sorry we're over an hour. But I try to go boom, boom, boom into everything I was trying to talk about and make sure I didn't forget. But Bureau of Consumer Financial Protection. Okay? This is definitely going to be an ally. This here about the Buck Act to really break it down. Um, this is that it's only three pages long. Print it out or at least just save it somewhere. Um, you can save it on your phone even. Phones allow you to save PDFs as well, right? In your files. Save it. Reread it. Reread it. I mean, you know, um, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how many things stick out. And then after you read it enough times, it'll, it'll stick. You'll be like, oh, it'll make sense. Things will, that didn't make sense to you before will stop making sense to you now. Okay? So I hope that was insightful. I have a bunch of things I'm putting together. I got more forms that need to be sent out. Daya is dashing constantly, right? I got to dash up out of here. But for anybody who deals with any type of ill treatment from people in this um, arena, you call them straight out. You call the insurance company. You file a grievance right away with their information. And then you can follow the, um, that up with a separate action and you'll have that to support it and you can request them to mail it to you and they surely will so they were really good i appreciated melly that helped me out it was great to hear a friendly voice after such a shitty day so thank you so much guys i hope your day goes well and um we'll go into some more topics of course i have a lot to, to delve into but one thing at a time right have a great day guys i'll talk to you soon